activist groups have been successful in, in, in causing a massive drop in Twitter advertising revenue. A lot have happened when Elon Musk take over Twitter. The $44 billion acquisition of Twitter by the richest man in the world was finally finalized. This has also brought chaos all over, with celebrities complaining about the reforms that Musk is about to bring to the platform. However, Musk claimed he did not purchase the social media site to increase his wealth but rather to attempt to benefit humanity. Really though, Musk? How is charging for blue ticks benefiting anyone? And what does Trevo Noah have to say about this? Welcome to the Tesla News Hangout. Today, we are going to look at all that has to happen now that Twitter is owned by Elon Musk. So, stay tuned as we look into this. The Bloomberg Wealth Index calculated that Elon Musk lost $8 billion due to taking over Twitter. According to Bloomberg, Musk's fortune was estimated to be around $212 billion before the $44 billion sale was finalized on Thursday. On Friday, that amount dropped to $204 billion. Musk is still the richest man in the world. But according to Bloomberg, his net worth has decreased by $66 billion this year. This is primarily due to the 43% decline in Tesla shares this year, which was expected by some investors who thought he would sell more Tesla stock to finance the Twitter transaction. However, about 15.6% of Tesla's shares are still owned by the CEO. When Tesla shares skyrocketed in November of last year, Musk's net worth reached a record high of $338 billion. Elon Musk, Twitter's new CEO, has already announced the monetization of blue ticks and is now preparing to implement yet another significant change. As one of the first significant updates to the microblogging platform since Elon Musk took control of the business, Twitter may begin rolling out the ability to modify tweets to all of its users soon. A Bloomberg article also states that beginning on November 7, all users will have access to the edit tweet feature. In September, Twitter began testing the function, and last month, the firm began rolling out the edit tweet feature to Twitter Blue users in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. If this is the case, the revamp of the Twitter Blue subscription will be the biggest change to the site. Users will be able to correct mistakes, add missing tags, and more by using the edit button. After tweets are published, users will have a 30-minute window to change them a few times. Twitter adds that it will closely monitor how the functionality changes how users read, compose, and interact with tweets. It will display an icon, timestamp, and label to make it evident to readers that a tweet has been changed. Viewers can see the tweet's edit history, which contains earlier iterations of the tweet, by tapping the label. Only the platform's subscription service, Twitter Blue, which costs users $4.99 per month, can now access the edit tool. However, according to Bloomberg, it might be made available to all of Twitter's users for free soon. Mr. Musk's first significant action after taking over the firm was writing an open letter to Twitter's main source of income, the advertising department. In the letter, he pledged to carry out his goals to advance free expression on the platform without allowing Twitter to become a free-for-all hellscape. He also presented investors with ideas for charging users $20 a year to keep their verification badges, reducing the platform's reliance on advertising revenue. The multi-billionaire later revealed that users will have to pay $8 a month to receive the coveted Twitter blue tick, calling the platform's existing verification process, bulls. In addition, users who sign up for Twitter blue purportedly receive precedence in replies, mentions, and search, the ability to submit lengthy videos and audio content, and a feed with half as much advertising. According to reports, Twitter blue employees are working around the clock to implement the new adjustments. One of the company's executives, Esther Crawford, in charge of early stage goods, admitted on Twitter that she slept at her workplace to fulfill deadlines. According to reports, the CEO of Tesla also had mass firings planned for Twitter. While Mr. Musk on Monday denied a New York Times report that said he was considering mass layoffs, he had previously informed potential investors that he intended to decrease the company's headcount from about 7,500 to a little over 2,000. According to a Thursday Bloomberg article, the multi-billionaire wanted to eliminate 3,700 workers at Twitter, or roughly half of the company's workforce. According to the story, which cited unnamed sources, Mr. Musk also intends to alter Twitter's present work from anywhere policy and may ask the remaining employees to go to offices. Since purchasing Twitter, the new CEO has fired three of Twitter's senior executives, including the chief executive Parag Agrawal, the chief financial officer Ned Siegel, and the head of legal policy, trust, and safety, Vijaya Gad, as a result of changes made to the firm. After Elon Musk's takeover, Rob Kaczynski has commented on the ongoing discussion on Twitter over blue tick verification. 
In a lengthy thread on Wednesday, November 2, the actor, who has portrayed Macklin Warlow in True Blood and Sean Slater in EastEnders, emphasized how crucial it is to quickly recognize authentic social media accounts. Musk recently declared that verified users would have to pay a monthly verification fee to keep their blue ticks. Kaczynski opposed this notion by relating a horrific incident in which a fan impersonated him and addressed young followers. Kaczynski said that when he was on EastEnders, years ago, before verified accounts were a thing, he was approached several times by parents of youngsters who had been, conversing, with him online. However, children between the ages of 11 and 15 had been speaking with a fictitious person, and as a result, one of these kids went missing. Kaczynski continued by saying that even though he wasn't using social media at the time, he tried to let people know he wasn't communicating with his fans by displaying his true profile information on other websites. Kaczynski said that he felt helpless to stop individuals from exploiting his name and likeness to swindle or groom people, and verification was created for this reason. It wasn't done to gain influence or use a platform to leverage funding since it was crucial to protect people. It served as a safeguard against total scumbags. He continued by expressing his desire for CEOs like Musk to take into account the advantages of verified accounts, one of which is to defend people. Kaczynski admitted that he doesn't tweet much, is afraid of the internet, and battles with many things in life, but his account is there to prevent phony accounts from existing. Kaczynski also said Twitter is doomed if Elon Musk loses that basic ability to protect individuals and minors through authentication. Musk being Musk, tweeted, to all complainers, please continue moaning, but it will cost $8. Elon Musk's proposal to charge Twitter users a fee to be verified has also drawn criticism from Trevor Noah. The Tesla CEO criticized the previous authentication approach as a lords and peasants system, and said the change is necessary to battle spam. However, Noah referred to the concept as crazy, and added that it doesn't make logic, in his most recent episode of The Daily Show. Noah claimed that the proposal conflicts with Musk's goal of promoting equality and free expression on Twitter. Noah said, so, let me ask you this, why should anyone pay to be verified on Twitter if you're trying to promote equality? Just mark everyone's name with a blue tick. He might be right, but I would love to know your thoughts on this. Do you think it makes sense to offer something as equality and then charge for it? Musk, the richest man in the world, reportedly planned for the verification charge to cost $20 per month but lowered the cost in response to criticism. Elon Musk has also stated that banned users won't return to Twitter for weeks, which means that former President Donald Trump and other users who have been banned won't return before the November 8 midterm elections. However, someone else is already back. We will find out who in a minute. According to a tweet from Mr. Musk on Wednesday, Twitter will not allow anyone who was deplatformed for breaking Twitter rules back on the platform until they have a clear mechanism for doing so, which will take at least a few more weeks. He announced that he was establishing a council to supervise content moderation and provide direction for how the platform will enforce bans. In a post, the platform's head of safety and integrity stated that Twitter was watching closely against attempts to manipulate conversations regarding the midterm elections. After being banned from Twitter last month for allegedly making anti-Semitic tweets, Kanye West has now made his first tweet. After sharing tweets that broke Twitter's and Instagram's rules, Kanye West was banned from both sites last month. At the end of the month, his Twitter account was restored, but Kanye hadn't posted anything there since October 9. On November 3, he shared a picture of NBA basketball player Kyrie Irving without a caption as his first post following the ban. Fans reacted positively to Kanye's return to the site by liking and commenting on the tweet. Although they don't let you back on Twitter, Kanye is back. When a fan questioned why Kanye's account had been reinstated, Elon said that Kanye's account was restored by Twitter before the acquisition. That's all from this video. What do you think of Elon Musk's reforms? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel Tesla News Hangout, where we talk about Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX. While you're at it, hit the bell so you never miss any of our videos, as more exciting ones like this are on the way. I'll see you at the next one. Musk just tweeted, the bird is freed to his 110 million followers.